What is up Techno fam, Chana D here, and in today's video I'll show you how to connect two or more amplifiers to your pre-pro or AV receiver, and we're going to get into it right after the jump. And I am back, as you can see I'm not in the studio here, I am at work, cozying up by the fire which probably means at this moment in time, you are most probably asleep, unless you're up at 3 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Anyway, this is another viewer requested video. I get this question a lot. In fact, somebody just asked me this last week, and it's not a complicated process, but I know people want to get walked through it, so here we are. Now, I personally have been using two amplifiers for quite some time now, maybe over like two years now, I think. And it's a pretty easy concept to get. You know, I'm running 10 speakers total, so I can run a 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos or DTS-X setup along with a 10.1 Oro 3D setup. So I've got 10 speakers and I've got two five channel amplifiers, right? So five plus five, 10, 10 speakers, there you go. Now all you really have to do is figure out, you know, what kind of configuration which amplifiers will work with your AV receiver or your pre-pro and for your setup. So if you have a nine channel setup, you could get like a five channel amplifier for your ear level speakers and then have your AVR, you know, power your height channels, right? But if you wanted to go with a second amplifier, you could get a four channel amplifier for your high channels. So five channel amplifier, four channel amplifier, add those together, you get nine channels. So pretty simple, right? Now, when you get into something like 11 channels, that's when you're like, uh, you might have to get like a seven channel amplifier and then a four channel amplifier, or you could get, you know, a five channel amplifier and have one unused channel. It all depends on like what kind of deal you can get on an amplifier, if you can get something used. You know, it's not really a huge deal if you have like an unused channel here or there. Obviously you would wanna get, you know, seven plus four to equal 11, four and 11 channel setup. Then you got a 13 channel setup. What would you do there? Maybe go with a three channel for your front stage and then two five channel amplifiers. Now that's kind of like the hard part, you know, finding amplifiers that fit your budget and work with your speakers and your AVR pre-pro. And once that's done, everything else, yeah, it's pretty simple. For this demonstration, I have the following equipment. Marantz AV7706, Parasound A51, and Parasound A52 Plus amplifiers. And since the Marantz is a pre-pro, I did go ahead and get 10 XLR cables from Kimber Cable. They arrived custom made for Chana. Look at that. I feel so special. And you guys know I'm a sucker for braided cables and they have this cool braid and some color to them, which I also like. If you're using an AVR with pre-outs, you will be using RCA cables instead of XLR. I usually go with the Mogami Studio XLR cables, but these Kimber Cable PBJs cost a little bit less, so I decided to give these a try. I will have links in the description to the cables if you want to check them out. I also got this label maker, and I'm planning on fixing the labels onto the XLR connectors of each cable, just so I know what cable is going where. I received the AV7706 last week, and will be making videos about this unit as the weeks go by. However, if you are looking to upgrade your AVR or pre-pro, and are looking at Denon or Marantz, make sure to shoot me an email for pricing and availability. All right, so let's plan out which speakers I'll be using and what ports on the back of the 7706 I will be taking a look at. Now I already know I will be using the standard five speakers going to the Parasound A51. That's gonna be the front right, front left, center, surround right, and surround left. Those are all going to be going to the A51. Now I don't have any surround back speakers, so I'll skip those. But I will connect the following to the Parasound A52+. Plus. Height 1 right and left, height 2 right and left, and subwoofer 2. And just for those that do not know, the subwoofer 2 output will be used for the 5th height channel, also known as the Voice of God channel in a 10.1 Oro 3D setup. 
Again, I'll be using the balanced XLR connections, but if you are using an AVR, you will be using the unbalanced RCA preouts, which the 7706 also has, as displayed in this section here, right above the XLR outputs. Okay, so I got everything set up on the table here, and I'm going to connect every cable to the AV7706 first. So for the mains, I always connect the left and right speakers as far away as possible, so on either side. I usually connect the left channel to channel one, and I connect the right channel to channel five. Then I connect the center channel to channel three on the amp, which is in the middle. Next would be the surround right close to the right channel, so channel four. And the surround left closer to the left channel, so that would be channel two on the amp. And that's all for the Parasound A51. For the height channels, I connect height one left and right to channels one and two on the amp. Height two left and right go to channels four and five. And the signal from subwoofer two, AKA the voice of God channel, will be in the center connected to channel three. The one last thing you will need to do is connect up the trigger cable. This is the cable that sends a turn on signal from the AVR or pre-pro to your external amplifier. The AV7706 does have two trigger outputs, which you can connect one trigger cable to each amplifier. I did it a different way. I connect one trigger output from the 7706 to the trigger input on the A52+. Then I connect the trigger output from the A52 Plus to go to the trigger input on the A51. Some amplifiers have this trigger input and output loop, but others don't. The Parasound A52 Plus has both input and output, however the A51 only has an input. So you can daisy chain like I do if one of your amps has a trigger output loop, or you will have to connect both triggers from the processor or AVR to each amplifier individually. Okay, so that's pretty much how you connect two different amplifiers to a pre-pro or an AVR. Now, of course, you know, if you take this a few steps further, you're going to connect all your speakers to the amplifiers and not to your AVR like you used to do, right? Of course, this was a pre-pro that I used, so there are no speaker terminals on the AV7706, so there's also that. Now, once you've got this done, you're going to want to run test tones through your system or run the room calibration just to check and make sure everything is connected up properly and you have the right signal going to the right speakers. As in, if you have like uh, test tones going through the front left, you wanna make sure, you know, the sound is coming from the front left speaker. What I do is I just, you know, pick up one of the demo discs, like I saw the DTSX demo disc laying around, I tossed that in and I went to the call out section and there's this you know, 5.1.4 call out. I just played that and then boom, it went through all the speakers and they were all in the right place. So that's how I knew I had connected everything up properly and there was no, you know, mess up. And if there is something messed up, you're like, oh, okay. You can either change the speaker output or you can change the XLR or RCA, depending on which one's easier for you to reach actually. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. If you guys have any questions about this, let me know in the comments and we will see you in the next video. Peace.